Hi, and welcome to ARM's What Is program. In each episode, we dive into a tech topic to give you insight and perspective into some of the hottest design trends today. I'm Brian Fuller, Editor-in-Chief at ARM, and today we're going to explore AI inference, or to spell it out, artificial intelligence inference. AI is obviously a hot topic and a growing application space, but it can seem like a complex technology landscape. Today, to help us understand one aspect of that landscape, AI inference, are two of my favorite people in the space, Dennis Laudick and Steve Roddy. Dennis is the head of AI machine learning marketing at ARM, and Steve is head of products for AI and ML. And here's something a lot of people don't know about these guys. Dennis got an engineering degree, but he minored in philosophy. And that comes in handy in the AI world. Now, Steve dabbles in a lot of different sports, and for his efforts, he's broken 13 bones. Let's dive right in. I'm going to start with Steve. You're looking good today, my friend. Uh, what is AI inference and how does it work? So in the world of, of AI or more specifically machine learning, people, there are two phases, if you will. There's the training process. That's the, the, the process of actually developing a particular piece of, of AI. And then when you deploy it and use it in a real life situation on new data, that's called inference. So train based on recorded, uh, stored and labeled images or sound or data, and then de deploy in a new situation and use the AI to, to help uh, you know, augment human decision. So at the technology level, how is inference implemented? Is this done on CPUs or specialty processors or something else? Yeah, that's, that's, that's an interesting one. Um, I think the, the industry, again, is a little bit confused about this. Certainly they have been. I think there's, there's some clarity coming out of it. Um, machine learning can be run on any type of processor. Um, it just depends on what you're trying to do. So, you know, machine learning, it's just computing. It's the same thing we've been doing for decades now. Uh, the difference with machine learning or, you know, what is often called artificial intelligence today is there's a massive upshoot in the, uh, particular types of computing they want to do, like you know, many, many orders of magnitude. And so if you want to do that at really complex versions or high performance or really high efficiency, that's when you can get benefits out of using a, a, a computing architecture that's more tailored to those type of workloads, um, which is what you get with ARM's CPUs, our GPUs, and our NVUs. They're all kind of different, different variants depending on what you're trying to achieve uh, with your machine learning. Got it, got it. And Steve, is, is AI inference done mostly in the cloud or is it starting to move out to the edge and, and endpoints? Good question. The easiest way to think of it is the, the best place to, to, to run your model, to do your inference is where your data is located. So certain problems, you've got all the data stored in the cloud. And that could be something like you know, some financial analysts on Wall Street, you know, looking at, at at stock trading patterns of the last 20 years and trying to predict where you know, the stock goes tomorrow morning. Well, obviously all the data is stored uh, on the servers or all the ways that uh, uh, machine learning are used to make recommendations when you log into your favorite shopping site. Your data is naturally in the cloud. That's where you want to run it. There's plenty of other uh, applications where the data is being sensed somewhere out in the real world, out on the, the edge or the endpoint, as, as they say. So. And if you have a smart doorbell, uh, a smart door lock that uh, you know recognizes your face as you walk up to it and wants to unlock your door, you want to do it there. You do it there because it, it's more reliable there. You don't have to rely on internet connection. You don't have to beam the data back to a, a data center somewhere. But, you know, worry about your privacy, worry about the latency of it coming back. And forth. So the, the the world has evolved to apply the inference you know at the point in time where the data is being being created or stored. And it makes it much more energy efficient too, rather than trying to you know, beam streams of video back and forth from, from cameras to cloud, et cetera. So that's the, that's the setup. So obviously the relentless march of technology is enabling us to deploy this technology farther and farther out. Dennis, how, how do you see, you know, given that, um, scale and advancement that we've seen the last few years. How do you see AI inferencing evolving uh, in the next three to four years? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a little bit biased because I work in, in the AI industry, but I, I really do believe that over the last five years or so, I think Steve and I have seen an explosion of 
applications out on the devices. And that's the, obviously what we spend a lot of our time uh, focused on is enabling that. But we, I don't, we're, we're nowhere near seeing the end of where this technology can go. So recently we've seen, you know, the early phases were about performance and accuracy. More recently, what we see in machine learning is a, a focus on efficiency and making things smaller and being able to put them on devices around you, even tiny sensors. Uh, get better with AI. So we see this stuff going everywhere. It's really exploding across the ARM device world. Well, thanks, gentlemen. I think we know a lot more about AI inference than we did just a few minutes ago. Check out all our other What Is episodes here and be sure to subscribe to this channel because we'll be adding more as the year progresses. Thanks for watching.